He said, and don't reject my work or my book just because I'm black. Because the best people with Allah are the people who have the most taqwa. And so this is speaking about the anti-blackness that was prevalent in the ummah then and is still prevalent now. And this is an attitude as well that is something that is still existing till today. People can look at a scholar and they'll be like, okay, this is a scholar, he has a book, da, da, da. where is he from? If you don't say Syria or Morocco or Yemen, people will be looking at you for, oh, he's from Nigeria. Eee. Oh, okay. Oh, he's from Senegal. Ah, okay. And they kind of overlook the book or they overlook the text, not knowing the depth of the scholarship that is hidden in those places. And so he said this, and in his context, in his time, if you study a lot of the classical books from the Arab world, there are a lot of anti-black sentiments in them. Even if you look at books like the Muqaddimah by Ibn Khaldun, there's racist statements in those books, there's anti-black statements. And so he's going against the popular narrative in the world. You had, you know, for example, a lot of scholars or people who called themselves scholars promoting things like the myth of Ham, the myth that black people are people that have been cursed by Allah, that's why they have their color, or promoting all of these ideas that black people are deficient in intellect as compared to other races. All of these racial stereotypes you do see in a lot of classical Arabic books. And Sheikh Ahmed Bamba was somebody that not only had access to these books and probably saw those statements, but also had racist interactions with people because he traveled, not only did he study within Senegal, but he also went to Mauritania to study. And he did face racism when he traveled to the Arabs to study with them in Mauritania because a lot of them looked at Senegalese people as people who were new to Islam, who weren't native Arabic speakers, and so they looked down on them. And so he's saying, just because of the fact that I'm not Arab and I'm black doesn't mean that I'm less of a scholar or doesn't mean that my books are less valuable as scholars in the Arab world. Alhamdulillah, I feel like it's a, it's a um, identity it's a challenge in identity politics that we're overcoming today in this day and age because alhamdulillah the room is full you guys had ahmed bamba and you all came through to listen and study his book alhamdulillah and it's something that inshallah throughout future generations will be wiped away he said he said because black skin having black skin doesn't mean that you have deficient intellect or bad understanding mm. Because in a lot of these classical Arabic books, as I said, geographical books, etc., they describe people in Africa or they describe Africans as people who have childish mentalities or people whose brains were the brains like the brains of children who enjoyed dancing and singing and were fit to be taken as slaves. That was one of the arguments that were used in the Arab slave trade against black people. And these are full in the books. So Sheikh Ahmed Bamba is addressing these statements directly and saying that no, skin color does not equate to your mental capacity. And it doesn't equate to also your spiritual station with Allah. 